we're in week three of our sermon series, All In Generations, that focuses on the gospel of Mark and the way that God calls each of us to live our lives, no matter how old we are or what our past experiences might or might not be. Through Jesus' life and teaching, we see that he invites all of us to be all in for the kingdom of God. Today, we join Jesus and his disciples on the road for what would be their final journey to Jerusalem as teacher and disciples. As they walked along, Jesus led the way with the disciples and others following. Jesus separated the disciples from the others, and he told them again for the third time what would happen to him, that he would be handed over to the chief priests and scribes, and they would condemn him to death. They would then turn him over to the Gentiles who would make fun of him, spit on him, whip him, and eventually kill him. But after three days, he told them, the Son of Man will rise again. And that's where we pick up with today's gospel reading. On the road to Jerusalem, Jesus in front, leading the way. I'm reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, verses 35 to 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many." This is the good news according to the Gospel of Mark. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our everlasting Redeemer. Amen. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Really? Really, James and John? Jesus has just told you again that he's going to be taken by the chief priests and scribes who will condemn him to death and then turn him over to the Gentiles who will strip him, mock him, torture him, and kill him. And you want him to do whatever you ask of him? Seems a little dense, a little self-absorbed, a little out of touch, don't you think? James and John and the other disciples don't yet understand that Jesus is not an earthly king. They were expecting a king who would do what kings do, overthrow their enemies, protect Jerusalem, have a lavish home with many people waiting on him. They want to sit beside him and wield power. The society in which they lived, remember they were under Roman rule, was one of threats and intimidation and of power gained through bribery and currying favor with those who held greater power. They expected Jesus to make all things right for Israel again and were expecting a warrior king who would defeat the Romans and establish God's kingdom on earth. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, fishermen, some of the first followers called by Jesus to follow him, we're now asking for seats of power in Jesus' coming kingdom. I shouldn't be so hard on the Zebedee brothers because looking at them is like looking in a mirror and the way they ask Jesus for what they want. Do for us whatever we ask of you. Grant us to sit one at your right and one at your left in your glory. We can see our own selfishness, our own need for attention, our own desire to design our lives to fit the life we want to live. To be human is to be insecure. Insecure about our future because we can't control it. We can't make it turn out the way we dream it should be. 
Teacher, you, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Give me a life free of worry, a perfect family, a successful job, and a carefree retirement. Heal any imperfections in this healthy, earthly body and let me and all my loved ones live a long, healthy, happy life filled with all the trimmings. The people I don't get along with or don't like or disagree with or don't look like me, maybe don't give them such a perfect life. Is that asking for too much? So we can understand where James and John are coming from, can't we? Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus responded, what, what is it that you want me to do for you? They asked to sit on the right and left hand of Jesus in his glory, and Jesus is patient with them. He doesn't rebuke them. He doesn't criticize them. He accepts them where they are in their understanding or lack of understanding about who he really is. And he politely tells them they don't know what they're asking. As the other disciples start to realize what's going on, they get angry with James and John. Hey, wait just a minute, you two. But Jesus explained that it's never about where you sit, a place of power or not, but rather it is ultimately about whom you serve. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As followers of Jesus, as his disciples, we are also called to be servants. God did not create us to be served, but to serve. We know from the creation story that God created each of us in God's own image. And through the life of Jesus, we come to see and to know what God wants for us. We don't know all the details, but we know how God wants us to live our lives after the example of Christ, which means in service to others. Can we all be in service to others and still survive, you're thinking? Now, Kathy, that seems a bit idealistic, doesn't it? How do we put food on our own tables, much less feed those who need extra help? If we live a life solely of service to others, how's that going to work? Life as a disciple of Jesus Christ is not an easy one. We have to sacrifice. We have to give of ourselves. We have to have a heart of a servant. And then we become better people. And the kingdom of God continues to unfold around us. What is God calling you to say yes to today? Today is Laity Sunday. And in our Sunday worship services, Lisa Gordon, the president and CEO of Atlanta Habitat for Humanity, is speaking. You may know that Habitat for Humanity began in Georgia, just outside of Americas, on a farm known as Koinonia Farm. Now, koinonia is a Greek word meaning communion, association, or partnership. And the term koinonia is used today to mean a Christian fellowship or body of believers. Koinonia Farm was founded in 1942 by two couples who wrote that they began the farm as a demonstration plot for the kingdom of God. Part of their ministry focused on the poor quality of local housing, and they began a project to build decent, affordable homes for their neighbors. After the sudden death of one of their founders, Clarence Jordan, the Koinonia community carried on Clarence's legacy. The partnership housing ministry evolved into Habitat for Humanity International under the leadership of Millard and Linda Fuller, former Koinonia members. The concept of partnership housing centered on those in need of adequate shelter working side by side with volunteers to build decent, affordable houses. The houses are built at no profit. New homeowners' house payments are combined with no interest loans provided by supporters and money earned by fundraising that creates the Fund for Humanity. That is then used to build more homes. Two of Habitat's most famous volunteers and supporters are Jimmy and Rosalind Carter, who have worked on houses well into their 90s. Dunwoody UMC is a supporter of Atlanta Habitat for Humanity. We completed our 30th house this year, and while the pandemic prevented us from the actual building of the home, we did provide the funding for it. You may know that the majority of the funding for each of our Habitat projects comes from our annual holiday festival, which is coming up in less than a month. Advertisement, we need volunteers. Signups are online or call the church office to find your place to serve. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve.
but to serve. Jesus' disciples, those known as Christians, are called not to be served, but to serve for the kingdom of God to continue to unfold here in Dunwoody in this world. We must be those who serve others. We must put away our need to control our own futures. We must step out in faith for our next generation of believers, building a community of believers who then work to nurture the expansion of the kingdom of God on earth. Isn't that what we pray for when we pray the Lord's Prayer? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The question I leave you with today is where does God want you to say yes? Where will you lead with a servant's heart as we all work together as servants for the kingdom of God? Jesus' invitation is not for you or me to sit in a seat of power to look down on others. Jesus' invitation to us is to be the shoulders that the future generations can stand on. His invitation to us is to be the outstretched hand that helps bring those who are living in the fringes, on the margins of society, into the circle, into the community. Jesus' invitation to us is to be the person who takes less so that others may have a portion. Will you say yes to that invitation? What does that look like for your life? There is a prayer attributed to St. Francis that I want to close with today. Let us pray. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Loving God, lead us to be people who develop servant hearts, who seek to serve others rather than to be served. Help each of us to hear your call on our lives for service and guide us, O oh God, to say yes. Yes, we will serve, and through our service, we will grow closer to you and allow your kingdom to continue to unfold here on earth. May it be so, loving and living God, for it is in your name that we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.